Hey guys, it's Vince. Today in this video, we are going to be discussing a new product release I have had so many requests for. I've literally lost count. I probably get requests for this at least 15 to 20 times a month, and that is what connectors do I use? Do you have a package that you've put together that you use? And is there a package that you can generalize and give me that will cover just about every connector I would need with my CNC controller build? Well, as you can see here, this is exactly what I did. I put together a box that contains over 550 pieces, including the actual for rule, auto release actual pliers, along with the Oxit Gold, which is a contact enhancer conditioner. And this is essentially everything you're gonna need with your CNC as far as connectors go. Now, I prefer to use ring connectors over fork terminals because a ring connector will, is much more safe than a fork terminal where if there was ever any pulling done on this, being it's a ring connector, it's solid. On a fork connector, if it pulls, it could actually release and the fork will actually pull out. So again, gold plated ring connectors, I give you three different sizes, three mil, four mil, and five mil. And then over here, of course, everybody is, is really or should be uh, more appropriately uh, familiar with for rules. And again, these are used in virtually all connections on IDS drive systems. If you're doing a lot of tinning, and I do both, I do a lot of tinning, I do a lot of for rule installations depending upon what I'm actually assembling. If I'm dealing with direct solder connections, I don't always use for rules. The one thing I do get asked a lot is, how do I use a ferrule and solder it after I use it? And I'm going to cover some tips in this video as well on this kit. But overall, you're getting 50 pieces of each color of ferrule. You're also getting 50 of each size ring connector. You're also getting 50 pieces of pre-cut heat shrink to match each ring connector. Now, I can tell you right now, this saves you an, a huge amount of time as you're building your system. Um, again, no one can cut these is with the amount of accuracy that my robot can as far as and as fast as it can do it. And again, this streamlines your entire build process. You're getting 100 pieces of 3 mil heat shrink, and you're also getting an additional 50 pieces of 4 mil heat shrink to accommodate the 5 mil ring connectors. So again, full package. And of course, once you're, uh, you're all set with actually doing your connections, you'll definitely want to apply the oxid because the oxid gold will protect the connections, drops the ohms. I mean, it does so much stuff. And if it did not work, I can tell you right now, NASA of all companies use it. I've been using it on all my spindle cables. Every assembly I do with my controllers, I use it and I love this stuff. And again, this one little bottle of 4.8 milliliters, this will last you easily, easily, probably two to three years. So again, it is completely non-conductive, meaning you can put this on anything electrical, even if it's plugged in, not that I recommend that, but it will not affect it. Amazing stuff, amazing. So again, full package, including the pliers, and just to show you exactly, because I'm using them myself, let me get them right here, side. Same exact ones, and these are the auto ratcheting and a self-release you can see as you crimp all the way in it'll release and you can see right here the four prongs and that's what compresses the ferrule and then it releases okay so what i'm going to do now is move this out of the way and i want to cover a couple different tips using a ring connector as an example and also using uh ferrule as an example and showing you guys one of the things i get asked the most how do you solder on a ferrule what what is your technique to solder on a ferrule and these are great questions because again, I'm dealing with it so much, I take it for granted. I don't mean to, but I do. Um, again, just to cover some details on the actual for rule pliers. Capacity is 23 gauge to 10 gauge. Uh, capacity in millimeters, 0.25 to six millimeter. These are heavy duty guys. These are no joke. I mean, you can see they're all steel construction. I've had mine now for probably Oh God, seven years. And again, they work amazingly well. So again, overall, what we'll start with is a ring connector install. And I've kind of streamlined the video a little bit in terms of I've got a piece of 18 gauge silicone uh, wire here. And you can see it is properly tinned. 
Here is a ring connector. Now, one of the biggest questions I get is on the prongs on the ring connector, what if you're using a gauge of wire? In this case, I'm not. The 18 gauge fits this perfectly. But what if I was using a gauge of wire that was wider or potentially wider than the actual prongs on the ring connector? What I recommend doing, and this is just a round uh, hole transfer, you could use a drill, which everybody pretty much has access to drills. You can come in here and press this, a matter of fact, this is small diameter, and again, I'm only doing it smaller because this naturally fits, but just to show you in demonstration, just press it. And I'm using my silicone soldering mat, and as you press that in between there, you'll spread the prong symmetrically, okay? So if you want to insert a lead here, you're golden to do that. Now, the big thing to pay attention to is you don't want to flare out your ring connector too much. We don't want to degrade that in strength. So I've got my stay put helping hands here, and again, these are priceless. If you haven't seen them, they're in my store as well. I'm gonna just apply some flux. Uh, soldering station's heating up right now. And again, you will be using, uh, I'm hoping you're using Kester 186 uh, flux and the Kester number 44 solder. I carry both, but the main reason I'm saying that, these are the best I've ever used. And again, we'll come in here, we're just gonna tin this real quick apply some uh, solder to it, leave it a little second or two, and you can see we've got a nice tin going on there. I hope you can see that. And the first thing most guys say right away is when they use the Kester is they're not used to seeing such a chrome finish. And you can see just how clean that is. Now what I'm going to do here is to solder this, this is how easy this would be. An 18 gauge is typically uh, the gauge size you'd be using for most general assembly when you're wiring your drives and other, other accessories. Just going to come in here, stay put makes it too easy right on the tip, let her do her thing, and done. Okay, that's the first point of contact. Now most guys are saying, well, hell, I do that all the time, that's not a big deal. And again, I try to always get the lead center, in this case, it's slightly off center, so we'll, we'll get it as square as possible. A little more flux, always apply flux in between. And now I'm gonna come on this side, and I'll just roll it in just a hair. Right there. And that should put it symmetrical. And we're good. Okay, so now that we're good with this, what we want to do is we want to come in here, we want to finish this connector off, and how we're going to do that is we're just going to come in here like this, and your prongs you're going to fold in carefully. Okay, I'm going to go one, I'm going to go two, I'm going to crimp it. Once we do that, we want to keep them as symmetrical as possible. Now, we don't want to get crazy with the force, and then we're going to do the same thing on this side. Just come in and fold in, and then come in and fold in. Okay, now what we'll do is we'll clean out lead. You can see how that came out. You got a little bit of crusty there, and that's just from the flux. You will require your flux remover. Um, once again, I do have this all in my store if you need it. Um, I wanted to keep the kit more isolated because I have a lot of guys that are already doing soldering. They're very familiar with that, so that's not an issue. But again, here we want a nice clean connector. Everything has been done. This is beautiful. And you can see where we're at right here. We've got a little openness right there. We're just going to close that. Bring that in. And we're right there. Now, this is where I do things a little differently. Some guys do this, some guys don't. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop a bead of solder right on that crease. And the reason I do that, it's going to double penetrate, and it's going to penetrate the lead that's already connected and join that to where that all becomes symmetrical and welded together. Okay, so we're going to come over here. We'll let our iron heat right back up. You can see that little crease line. I'm just going to come in. Once again, I do the carryover method. Apply the solder. We're in. Just like that, I'll apply a little more. This time I'm not adding flux, I'm just trying to fill that area, and I'm done. Now, you can also come on this side, and if I was gonna go on this side, I'll show you something else. We'll come on this side, we already got a nice amount of flux, or a solder there, excuse me. We're gonna come right here, we're just gonna to touch this briefly, and you'll see you've got a perfect joint. You got your flux there, you can see your flux there, the overflow is perfect, everything there is totally bonded and totally filled. Okay, so now we're gonna come over here, clean this. It's all about cleanliness, most of you already know that. Soldering is all about cleanliness. You wanna keep everything immaculate. 
Again, uh, take your time. That's the big thing. Most guys, I, I think sometimes with soldering, the biggest thing that we I find is that most guys are in a rush. You can see that connection is perfect. Look at that chrome finish. That's all set. Now, of course, you'd apply your heat shrink. And with the pre-cut heat shrink, guys, I'm not kidding you. The robot makes this too easy. Your edge is set. All you do is insert it. I'm not teaching anybody uh, anything they don't know, and you're done. So, again, we just heat shrink this, and you'll get perfect finish. Again, my heat shrink technique's a little different. I always start from the bottom. I have guys that'll say, why do you start from the bottom? Well, what I notice is when you start from the bottom, you're going to pull. Naturally, it's going to pull from the top, and you'll see the carryover. I'll leave it here for a little bit. A lot of guys rush this process. I don't go too hot. I stayed about 375, and I get a beautiful, beautiful finish. You'll never worry about burning your actual heat shrink, because that is possible. You can see what you have. Perfect. It's symmetrical. Everything is in line. If you're doing a lot of these connectors, I have a lot of guys uh, building things electronically if they're selling them. You want all your heat shrink to look as nice and symmetrical as possible, and you can see exactly how that comes out. Now, second tip I want to cover, one I get asked all the time. How do you solder on a ferrule? What is the best way to do that? They don't want to melt the plastic insulator, so of course if you generate too much heat with the soldering gun or the soldering iron, you're going to have problems. So easiest way to do this, I've already skinned this 18 gauge silicone lead and to tell you the length is about 10 millimeters you want to remove. Okay. Now that I've removed that, this silicone lead here is tin and you can see the conductors. I'm just going to touch a little flux to the tip. And this is the secret when working with this. First, we want to bind all of these conductors together to where when we insert it inside the ferrule, we're not going to naturally flare them out or have any flyaways. So we're just going to touch it and done. You notice, and I can't emphasize this enough, when you solder, you have two ways you can solder. You can solder with the tip or you can solder with the barrel. If you use more of the barrel, you're generating more heat naturally, making more uh, conduction to the actual conductors. You can see there, it's all perfectly tinned. We don't have a, a, a greater increase in diameter. And what that means is when we go to insert this, we're all set. And what you're looking for is slight penetration, probably by about two millimeters of the ferrule. Once that's been actually coming out of the barrel, as you see there, you're just gonna take your pliers, come in, and there's magic, right? Nothing new there. Now you can see we've got an excess piece of lead coming out that's tinned, it's right here. So what I'm gonna do is use my flush cutters. I'm just gonna skin them. Now I'm level, but I still have slight gaps. See those slight gaps right there? I don't know if the camera can pick it up. We are shooting in 4K, but I'm gonna show you how we do this. You're just gonna take some flux, apply it to the tip. Now what we're gonna do is because we have flux on that tip, as soon as I take this iron, put my caster, I'm going to get capillary action. I'm just going to take it right on the tip because we're going to control our heat. We're just going to go like this and magic happens. And now you're all soldered. Okay. So now you've got the best of both worlds. You've got a mechanical connection that cannot be beat in terms of you having a square prong. I've discussed this before, uh, depending upon what you're doing. Again, I still... I've used both methods. I prefer to use both methods. I know that when a lead is properly done, as far as being tinned, it's literally just as strong. But for rules are really nice if you're doing a lot of removals. If you're worried about taking things in and out, then a ferrule is always a way to go. And again, taking this and doing this method, you're guaranteed the best of both worlds, once again, with a mechanical connection, as well as a proper solder connection. Once again, it's not complete until we clean it. And then the magic happens. But again, I think that this method defines just how easy, again, to get the pro results. And that's what I'm talking about. You never have to worry about this lead ever failing. You never have to worry about air gaps or any potential conduction issues because, again, we've used Beth, uh, a mechanical connection and, again, using a weld connection on the tip. This is bound, so it's not going anywhere. You see how clean it came out. And we have very little heat conduction because, again, we only touched the tip. Capillary action, drew the solder in, filled all the gap, and you're all set. And again, your nylon insulator is perfect. So again, guys, I hope that this kit will help many of you. 
Um, I've had so many requests, like I said, the ring connectors are really tedious to find. Um, to be quite honest with you, I had to have some of them made because uh, to find them locally is difficult. Many guys tell me that all the time. And again, I like the gold-plated ones. Um, they just last and really they come out beautiful. They make your, your connections look awesome. Um, and again, using this with the deoxid on any of your connections, I'm telling you guys, I don't believe in endorsing anything that I feel doesn't work. Keg has been around since the 50s, and they are an amazing company. Uh, and again, Fortune 500s are using it. I've used it. I've seen a difference in the systems. I've seen ohms drop. Test it out yourself. I've put everything together that, once again, the biggest question I've answered, what do you use? Now you know exactly what I use. So again, you've got everything in the kit, minus your solder and flux, which... I do have links in the video, or excuse me, in the description of my solder and flux as far as if you require the Kester, we can do that. Something else I want to point out, if you want a custom package, I've had guys ask that. Maybe you want 100 of the red ferrules, 25 of the green ferrules. I can do that. I'm not China. I'm not, you know, I'm an individual. So if you say, Vin, I need this many ring connectors in this size, this many ring connectors in that size, I will build you a kit based on what you require. That right there will save you money and time. So that's what I'm looking at in terms of trying to offer what I feel is the best package per se on the market because we all know there's tons of connector packages on the market, nothing designed around this. Uh, the Ferrule gauge, once again, I don't know if I mentioned it, but they are 18 gauge, which again is for general actual applications for CNC use, uh, dealing with drives and you know terminal blocks. So again, everything has been covered, every base. If you guys have questions, require quotes, consultations, please message me direct at storm2313 at gmail.com. You can also message me through my uh, eBay store, eDealers Direct. You'll see links in the beginning of the video and at the end. I know that these videos generate sometimes more questions than answers. So again, don't be afraid to contact me. And I look forward to hearing from you. I wish you guys the best during the holiday season. Take care.